The Harrier Jump Jet is one of the most extraordinary planes ever built. It can hover in midair and doesn't need a runway. This British design is a helicopter and a high performance jet all in one. Flying the Harrier is, is awesome. The, uh, the Harrier to me is the best aircraft in the Royal Air Force. And because it does so many different things, the Harrier is one of those aircraft where you're constantly saying, well, I think I can do it a bit better. The Harrier cruises at 500 knots. It's one of the world's most maneuverable jets. As a tactical bomber, it has supreme performance on low-level raids. The Harrier's greatest strength is that it can land anywhere. Small landing sites can be set up near the front line, the aircraft hidden in a camouflaged shelter. Ground crews can rearm and refuel in just half an hour. A vertical takeoff would use so much power that the Harrier could not carry a full load of bombs. Using a rolling takeoff, a fully laden Harrier needs only 600 feet of runway. Conventional military jets need up to 9,000. Harrier is built around this single huge engine, the Pegasus, which employs a unique system of nozzles. Four nozzles moving simultaneously. They're pointing backwards. That's normal conventional flight. If we move the nozzles down, we can hover our aircraft by ducting some of the thrust of the engine downwards. When it's hovering, the Harrier's conventional flying surfaces don't control the plane. That's the job for smaller thrust nozzles, called puffer ducts. These are the puffer ducts, four puffer ducts, one on either wing, one on the nose and one on the tail. Duct some of the thrust from the engine to actually push up or push down, so I can now use my controls in the conventional sense, but I can now maintain a precise hover. The pilot uses his stick to operate both the conventional control surfaces and the puffer ducts at the same time. The Harrier's unique technology makes it one of the hardest planes to fly. Only the very best get the chance to fly it. We take the top guys that come through training, and then it's our job to get those guys through the Harrier conversion course. Now, obviously, it's an extremely hard course, and unfortunately, not everybody can actually make the grade. In training, Harrier pilots use a special two-seater. The student sits in the front. The instructor has dual controls at the back. Okay, Damien, on the, uh, on the takeoff then, we're going to go to 55 nozzle, which will be coming against the uh, stow stock. And when we get ourselves airborne, you're nozzling out, go back into conventional flight, and then we'll uh, do the rest of the after takeoff checks. We put the gear in the flat in the right position. The Harrier is very, very unforgiving if a guy makes a poor error of judgment. If he puts the wrong flap setting when he's on a strip and he tries to get airborne, he will die. OK, 15 second light, no spouts. Is it really whopper over? The instructor in the back of the aircraft, he's working pretty hard to make sure he's matching what the student is doing. We don't want to see a student get a mistake between the throttle and the nozzle. Stage one of vertical flight training. Students repeat to perfection short rolling landings and takeoffs on difficult terrain. The critical point for us is 120 knots to 30 knots. 
And what we have to try and do is teach a student to get through this area to be able to get to the hover. Learning to hover is the hardest stage of all. When you first start flying the Harrier, when you hover it, it's almost as though you're on a knife edge and you're afraid to move the stick or the throttle in case you fall off that knife edge. It's something that you've never done before. Uh, it's like no other aspect of flying you're doing. The concentration level is about as high as it possibly can be because you know that if you do something wrong, the, the jet is liable to bite you and hit the ground like a brick. It concentrates the mind a heck of a lot. Vertical takeoff and landing aircraft were developed so that planes could take off if their runways were destroyed. During World War II, the German Luftwaffe attached disposable rockets to their planes to reduce takeoff distance. In the 50s and 60s, engineers worked on over 30 different prototypes. Firing planes off the back of trucks, known as zero-length launch, was a surprising success. The problem was they still needed a runway to land. The weird-looking tail sitters were developed with both propellers and jet engines. The transition from vertical flight to normal flight was hard, and landing was nearly impossible. The pilot of this Ryan Vertijet had to literally hook his plane on a stand. In 1954, Rolls-Royce demonstrated a new concept. This prototype became known as the flying bedstead. Vertical flight came from the thrust of two jet engines directed down through adjustable nozzles. The principle was applied to the first British prototype, the short SC-1. This had five small jet engines, four for vertical flight and one for horizontal. But the major breakthrough came with the development of this engine. The Rolls-Royce Pegasus was the first single engine powerful enough to lift a full-size military plane vertically. Today, the Harrier is the ideal warplane for the U.S. Marines. On their amphibious assault ships, four Harriers and 30 choppers use a flight deck less than a quarter the size of an aircraft carrier's. We have no arresting gear or catapult gear, and we just rely on the Harrier's ability to rotate the nozzles on a short takeoff for launch and a vertical landing for recovery. The nozzles will be aft at the beginning of the takeoff roll until you hit the end of the ship, where you'll be going somewhere between 90 and 110 knots. As you hit the end of the deck, you will move the nozzle lever down to 55 degrees, and then the airplane will fly away. Using vertical landing, Harriers can operate in far worse conditions than conventional jets. In combat, they provide vital support for the ground troops during amphibious landings. Each assault ship can put thousands of troops ashore by helicopter and landing craft. Ahead of them, the Harriers take out key enemy positions. 